is Arlene Dwayne Hemingway, the author of a travel book called A Twist of Lemon, 100 Curious Stories in Exactly 100 Words, not including the title. Since beginning our travel there have been questions about the nature of a travel. We aim to clear this up for you today through this educational video with other members of my team, Lynn and Angela. Let's begin with the definition of a travel. A travel is a short work of fiction of precisely 100 words in length. The concept of traveling is said to have originated in the United Kingdom in the 1980s. The term travel originated from Monty Python's Big Red Book and was described as a word game where the first participant to write a novel was the winner. Later, in an effort to make the game possible in the real world, it was agreed that 100 words would suffice. We have received many travel submissions over the past several months that haven't met the criteria for a short work of fiction. So I want to turn the discussion over to Lynn, who will describe the difference between a poem and a drabble. Thank you, Arlene. I'll take the lemon. My name is Lynn Kumlenick, and I am a book editor, and I worked with Arlene on A Twist of Lemon. One of the things that we've noticed is many of the submissions we're receiving for our contests are poetry and not prose. So I wanted to take a minute just to, to talk about the difference. So a poem is actually a literary form that uses vividly descriptive and often rhythmic or metrical qualities of language. And its meaning is in addition to or in place of the prosaic meaning. So a poem may have multiple interpretations. Prose, on the other hand, is a form of language that has no formal metrical structure. It's more like everyday speech, and it consists of full grammatical sentences, dialogue, and paragraphs. And it foregoes aesthetic appeal to have clear, straightforward language. So I'm going to illustrate the difference between poem, a poem and prose by using Robert Frost's Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening. I'm only gonna read four lines of this poem, which say, the woods are lovely, dark and deep, but I have promises to keep and many miles to go before I sleep and many miles to go before I sleep. So that's an example of a poem. If we were to write this as prose, it may sound like the woods look lovely, lovely against the setting darkness. And as I gaze into the mysterious depths of the forest, I feel like lingering here longer, but I have pending appointments to keep and a lot of distance to cover before I settle in for the night. So I'm gonna get going. So the second paragraph is conveying a similar message, but it's conveying it in ordinary spoken language without a formal metrical structure. The second item I wanted to speak about to help all of you who are entering our contest is the subject of theme. We have received many travels that have multiple themes. That is okay. However, in a 100 word story, you wanna make sure that you have one central theme. A theme is defined as a central topic, subject, or key message within a narrative. It can often be summed up with one word such as love, death, or betrayal. And examples of this might be conflict between individuals, conflict between individuals and society, coming of age, and dangers of unchecked ambition. So a theme then is then exemplified by the actions, the dialogue, and the rest of the narrative of the characters in the story. So when writing a drabble, the first thing you wanna ask yourself is what is the main point that I want to convey to the reader? Remember, you only have 100 words. So stick with that main point, write your first draft with that main point in mind, and then do your editing from there and make sure that it's clear, that theme is clear when you reread your, your drabble. So, I'm going to next pass the lemon over to Angela, who's going to speak with you about the four elements of a complete story. Here you go, Angela. 
Okay, thank you so much. So how do you write a complete story in just 100 words? And you have to have a beginning and a middle and an end. Well, the first thing is Lynn said, stick to your topic, make the main thing, the main thing. So the first thing I'm do, I do when I'm writing a hundred word story or a 70,000 word story is I do the bare bones of the story. This is just getting right to the point, doing your beginning, the middle end and sticking to your plot. With a drabble, I would usually say this is about 40 to 50 words. That's not a lot of words. So you have to make each word count. So after I get the story down pat, have the story there, the plot of the story, the beginning, middle and end, as I said, and I stuck to my topic, then I go on to descriptions. Descriptions usually are about 15 to 20 words. So you want to describe people, places and things in just 15 to 20 words. So make each word count again. And the next thing I do is character development. To me, this is the most important part of the story because people fall in love with characters. And so you only get about 15 to 20 words to make people fall in love or fall in hate with your characters because sometimes we have villains, right? So with this, I use, like I said, 15 to 20 words and I make each word count. But one of the main things that Arlene does is she gives each person a unique name. For example, the name Arlene Dwayne Hemingway, that name right there, I just had this image of Arlene. And so that would, so give each person a unique name to begin with and then your character development in 15 to 20 words it'll make it easier for you uh the last thing i do is dialogue and again about 15 to 20 words and this is a place that you can fix anything that you've missed with dialogue you can give descriptions you can complete the story you can also give a little character development and you can even do a twist and i always love a twist even though you don't have to do a twist I prefer drabbles with a twist as Arlene does and it makes it all the more interesting. So that's kind of how you write a 100 word drabble and make a complete story in just 100 words. So I'm going to give the lemon back to Arlene and let her Thank give you some you. final advice. Thank you, Angela. Many ask how I get my ideas. For me, the kernel of a story starts from anything I've heard or seen from the past or present from a personal experience, by reading a newspaper, from something heard on radio or television, from conversations with friends or those of strangers, not meant for me, but too loud to be ignored. Carrying a notebook and several pens ensures these prompts are remembered. Paying to everything with rapt attention can serve you well. Likewise, don't be deterred by having stories that are more than 100 words at first. The average length of my travels these days is between 103 to 138. But in the past, some were over 200 plus words in length. After reading your piece and beginning to recraft it, culling, repletion, and duplication forces succinct descriptions, which automatically help drop the word count. Your drabble may rewrite itself. Characters, for example, may exchange personalities. And your completed work might wind up completely different from the original. Let it happen. I keep a notebook of male and female names, which prevents me from reusing any name in a future story. I, as you've heard, prefer a twist to my story ends, but that doesn't mean your drabble has to have one. You don't have to be an author to join a writer's group, which may help you get the critiquing or encouragement you need. Some are now regrouping in person, while others still only remain on Zoom as my personal group does. When ready for publication, an editor is invaluable. Lynn edited A Twist of Lemon. I call her my literary ombudsman. Angela, who has also come aboard recently, does editing. If you've ever journaled, written thank you notes, cards of appreciation, encouragement or sympathy, you may have drabbled. No matter your information intake, your thoughts are best chronicled in your own words and style, which may be refreshingly unique. Never let someone's lack of enthusiasm regarding your creation dissuade you from writing. 
We hope these clarifications will make your Drabble writing easier and more frequent since the form is so easily adaptable to everyday life situations. Just remember to write on. For more information, please contact me on Facebook and on my website at info at arlindwainhemingway.com. We hope to hear from you soon. Goodbye for now.